<clears throat> there's a different set of rules for uh, rounding, for handling significant digits when you're doing multiplication division. This is a different from addition and subtraction, which we covered yesterday. Okay. Um, and the reason has to do with the nature of the math. Now, I won't get into this in, in a lot of detail, but um, suffice it to say that multiplication is just repeated addition. You know? And uh, division is essentially repeated subtraction. Okay? So, uh, the, when you multiply by something, you're not doing the same mathematical operation. And we have to handle those digits in a different way come up with this, something that is at least reasonably close to the uh, precision of your measurements. And that's what we said yesterday. Your um, answer in a problem can be only as precise as the least precise measurement. And the precision of the measurement is shown by the number of digits to the right. Okay, and we saw that yesterday. We're adding and subtracting and we're only looking at rounding off to the right. But it looks a little bit different when we're doing addition and subtraction. So let's say we take something like 19.4 grams of lead. Now, that's the symbol for lead. 19.4 grams of lead. And um, to, I'm going to go ahead and introduce you to a process called dimensional analysis here. So at least I don't require you to know about it too much yet, but just kind of show you what it looks like in giving you these rules. Okay. It turns out that, that lead has a specific density, and uh, there's 11.3437 grams of lead in every um, cubic centimeter or milliliter of lead, okay? So in order to convert this mass of lead to a volume of lead, we're going to use that density. And how we're going to do that, the way we're going to do that, is to put the mass down here on the bottom to match the mass that's on the top here. Okay, so we set up this conversion unit so that the mass, so that what's down here has the same units and species as what is on the top here. Okay, and that's basically the setup process we're going to be using in this class. Right now, I'm just setting it up for you to introduce you to these rules. So let's see, 11.3437, 11. Four, three, seven grams of lead always has a density um, where that mass of lead is equal to one milliliter of lead and so we can put them in a fraction in this form and we'll get more to that why, about why you can do that and things like that later okay but the neat thing about setting up conversions like this in this fashion, where you have your conversion unit as a fraction, it allows you to use some simple algebra. If I had uh, an algebra problem where I had an x on the top and an xy on the bottom, I bet you guys could tell me right now what the answer is. X, y, huh? X, y, no. Y'all can't tell me that? Okay. Well, you can cancel out the x's. And so the answer is 1 over y. Okay? Whenever you, I guess you haven't gotten to that in algebra yet. Um, or maybe you've forgotten it. Who knows, you know? But whenever you have the same thing on the top as on the bottom, you can cancel those things that are alike if you're doing a multiplication on the top and bottom. Okay? Um, so if I start out with a problem like this where I have x, and I want to multiply x times uh, y over x. I can put this x over 1. Multiply the x and y together. I get x, y. And I have that over 1 times x, which is simply x. Well, what can I do there? Cross out the x's. That's right. The x's go away. And my answer then becomes y over 1 or simply y. Okay? So what we're going to do here is just a simple form of algebra. It's really simple. Okay, I have two things here that are exactly the same, the grams. So I can cancel grams like I can cancel x's. Okay? 
So that's the units of measurement I canceled. Grams are a unit of measurement. Well, I also have something called, this is the symbol for lead, and we call that a species, okay? And uh, yesterday when we were talking about significant digits, I said with every number you have to have a unit of measurement, assuming the number has a unit of measurement, most of them do. But sometimes you also have to have a species. Well, in this case, we've got a species, okay? Well, we can also cancel the species, just like we cancel the units. So the lead can be canceled out, all right? And now we're ready to do this math. Now, down here, when I did this X and Y problem, okay, I essentially canceled the two X's, right? What if I simplified that a little bit and went ahead and canceled them over here? I'd get the same answer, wouldn't I? Yeah. See? Y'all understand what I'm doing? No. Okay. I can put them together here and cancel the X's and get Y. Or I can go ahead and cancel them right here because this is on the top this is on the bottom. So let me show you how, what that looks like. Here's X over 1. And here's Y over X. And instead of going through this step, I can go and just cancel those out and go ahead and get Y or Y over 1. And it saves me a little time. That makes sense? Kind of a shortcut. All right? Either way is fine. Okay, I have a question. Yep. How did you get the 1 and all that? I just, I, I looked it up. This is the density of lead. That's what I said a minute ago. The density of lead is 11.3437 grams per milliliter. You don't. I gave it to you. I did. I just gave it to you. I just told you that. Okay? All right, now this is where you're going to need a calculator. Okay? And you have to have a calculator by Monday. Okay? Uh, calculator on your, on your cell phone is not going to be um, sufficient because they won't do some of the operations we have to do in here. Okay? If you have a calculator already, it would be a good chance for you to go ahead and start practicing with your calculator. Okay? Get out your calculator's practice. All right? Really? Okay. Well, that's cool. But, um, hmm, I don't want you using your cell phone to test, so you need a calculator. Okay? Because you can do other things with your cell phone to cheat and... Wouldn't be you. I maybe not be. You know, I'm just saying. You know, huh? And you're asking that question? No, I'm sorry. Okay. All right. All right. Here we go. So if I have this on the top and this on the bottom, I can multiply this times one and get 19.4 over here, and this times one and get 11.3437, and divide 19.4 by 11.3437. I could do that. Would it be easier just to go ahead and do it here? That's what I do. Does that make sense? Hold, 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 your, hold your answer just a second. I'm just going to make sure everybody understands what we're doing here before I move on. Okay, I'll tell you what let's do. Let me take a sheet of, another sheet of paper and kind of stick it over here to show you how, how, what I'm talking about, okay? All right. I can set this problem up like this. I can take these numbers... Well, this is not what I understand cross-multiplying to be. Maybe I'm wrong, but anyway. So I could take 19.4 multiplied by 1, and what is that? 19.4. Okay. I have these units and species left over here. I've got to keep those. I can't just give, get rid of them. I couldn't cancel them. Milliliters of lead. And 1 times 11.3437 is... Okay, does everybody understand what I did there? Okay. okay. And then I can go ahead and do the math here. Right? So let's take then 19.4 and divide it by divide it by um, 11.3437 and I get this really long number. I can barely see that. I'll write it out for you. 1.71020. Yeah, I, when I move the calculator out of the way, it'll get dimmer and you can see it better. Okay. All right. Let me raise this, ca this camera up just a little bit and make it easier probably for you to see the whole thing. All right. Yeah, probably. Probably. 
Now you can anybody can do this math with a with a cell phone calculator, but the more complex stuff, some of them will and some won't, I guess. I, huh? Yeah, very good. <laughs> what did she say? She said basically you don't have to worry about the one. That's a good way to think about it. Yes, I do. I need to put that over the but I'm not. I haven't gotten there yet, but. Because I can. It makes it easier. It makes it less complex. Right. I've divided this number by this number. I multiply this number by 1, I get 19.4. I multiply this number by 1, I get 11.3437. Okay. Well, I don't understand the question. Okay. Well, since we're not worried about the 1s, we could do the math without all this, couldn't we? So, all I have to do is take this number and divide by that number Turns out it's the same answer. Okay. Seven one point seven one zero two zero zero three seven six. We do have to have milliliters of lead. They gotta, you gotta keep that in there. Okay. We're gonna round that number. That's we're now ready to round the number. We gotta do all this other stuff before we get there. Okay? But well, now we're ready to round the number. Okay? All right, so here's the rule in multiplication and division. Here's the rule in multiplication and division. Okay, <clears throat> uh, let's ignore numbers that are counting numbers. Okay. Ignore numbers that are counting numbers, like the 1. That's a counting number, right? Well, a counting number is 1, 2, huh? Well, you, 0 is a counting number, too. We won't, let's not sweat that too much because we won't have that too much, okay? But these are measured numbers here, okay? They had to be measured because that's where we got the decimals from, okay? Um, they can also be calculated numbers. We're just going to ignore the counting numbers. So... Most of the time, counting numbers are just whole numbers. You know what whole numbers are? Who does not know what a whole number is? Raise your hand, let me know. Okay. All right. So, so if that one would have been like a 30, you just ignored it? I'd still ignore it when I'm rounding off. I won't ignore it for the math, but I ignore it when I'm, doing, when I'm getting ready to do the rounding part. This is the, word, with this, this is the rule here for rounding we're getting to. Okay. You don't ignore the whole numbers when you're doing the math. You so ignore you the whole numbers when you do the rounding. So you still do 19.4 divided by, 19 divided by like 3 mm -hmm. times 3. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you I mean, if, if, the, if, there three here, uh, if there were 3 here, we'd still divide by 3. Uh, but when we get to rounding, we're only going to look at the numbers uh, that are not counting numbers. Does that make sense? Yeah. One's a counting number. Two's a counting number. We ignore those for the purpose of figuring out how to round. Okay, and what we're going to do is, once we ignore the numbers that are counting numbers, we're going to choose the measured or calculated numbers, and that's what these are, measured or calculated. I think this, this would be measured. This is probably a calculated number, but it doesn't really matter. They call, they got decimal places, they're going to be measured or calculated. Choose the measured or calculated numbers. And most of the time, those are those will have decimal places. That's a good clue that you got to measure to calculate a number. If you got decimal numbers, they're measured or calculated. Choose the measured or calculated. I shouldn't say numbers, but number singular that has the least total digits. Okay. 